Hey guys, in this video, we are going to go through determining density PowerPoint. So density is the measure of the amount of matter per unit of volume. So here's a quick example. We have two boxes here and uh, both boxes would have the same size. However, since this box has more matter inside of it, or dots in this case, we would say that has a higher density. Density is the amount of matter per unit volume. And you have probably heard of density before, right? If you, I don't know, say someone is dense, what you are essentially saying is, hey, you weigh a lot for your size, right? That's what density means. So because this box has more dots per unit, per size, it is more dense than the other one. So imagine if you had two identical shoe boxes. So both shoe boxes are the same size and they're both empty. And if you fill one up with pennies and the other with styrofoam, which one would have a greater density? Well, I think you should say that the pennies would have a greater density since the volume is the same and the pennies would weigh more than the styrofoam. Well, the box with the pennies would have a greater density. So what is matter? Right over here, it says definition of density is the amount of matter per unit of volume. What is matter? So matter can be either mass or weight. And we actually touched on mass versus weight back in unit three, I believe, when we did um, unit conversions and metric and U.S. customary. But we will recap as well. So mass is the amount of stuff in an object. Whereas weight takes into account the force of gravity on, an, on a mass. So we say that weight is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And the term acceleration might be new to some of you, but you know what gravity, how gravity works, right? If I drop an object off of a building, it'll accelerate towards the ground. It'll keep getting faster and faster and faster. Um, as the distance that it can fall increases. So weight is equal to the mass times the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is depending on where you are in the universe. If you're on Earth, you'll have one gravity. If you're on Mars, you'll have a different gravity. The moon, a different gravity, yet still. So do you remember this slide from the last uh, unit or two units ago? It just said that... Um, the example that it provided was, what happens if you step on a scale on Earth and on the Moon? When you step on a scale, what units does your scale measure? Well, probably pounds. But pounds is actually a weight, a force. Weight and force are interchangeable in this, just FYI. So when you step on a scale, it gives you your force or your weight which takes into account the gravitational pull. So if you bring that same scale onto the moon, would your weight be the same? No, your weight will be different on Earth and in the moon. If you measure your mass on Earth, would your mass be the same on the moon? Yes, it would. Mass is the amount of matter in your body, the amount of stuff in your body, whereas weight or force is the mass that you have being pulled to the ground by the force of gravity. So uh, what's the matter? Let's look at the units for both U.S. customary and metric. So U.S. customary for mass, we measure that in slugs. That was that weird one that none of you have ever heard of, right? And when we measure weight or force in U.S., we say pounds. That's a lot more common. And the acceleration due to gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. Now, you might be wondering, what does that mean? Um, you don't have to worry too, too much about what it means. What matters more is the application of it. Quickly, I'll just tell you what it does mean. It means that for every second that an object is falling, the speed will increase by another 32.2. Um, so for metric, the mass is measured in grams or kilograms, and the weight force is newtons. So you guys are probably more familiar with 
mass for metric, where you're more comfortable with using grams, and for U.S. customary, you're more comfortable with using weight. And that's typically how you'll be asked questions. If you're dealing with weight or dealing with U.S. customary, the question will be in weight. And when you are working in metric, the question will be in mass. Let's go some quick examples to help you use them interchangeably. So mass and weight are often confused. So let's do an example in SI. A man has a mass of 100 kilograms. What is his weight in newtons? Well, let's quickly go back a few slides and we remember that weight or force is equal to mass times the force of gravity. Force of gravity is shown in this chart over here. In this problem, we are given the mass, so we want to know the weight. We have our weight equals mass times gravity. Plug in the mass. The gravity is a 9.8, which we got over here. <laughs> and we get 980 Newton. Let's do another example. A woman weighs 100 pounds. What is her mass? Again, mass is measured in slugs in English. So we have now the W. We know that W equals M times G. We know what G is. That's 32.2 from this chart over here. And we can quickly do a simple algebra problem. So if I rearrange this to get M by itself, I'll divide both sides by G. I plug in 100 for the weight, because that's the force. And I divide by 32.2, and I get 3.1 slugs. So her mass is 3.1 slugs. And since we are almost always going to be working on Earth, we can make some assumptions, because technically you can't convert between kilograms and pounds because one is a mass and the other is a weight. They're just, it's not the same unit of measurement. It's like if I asked you to convert eight miles to seconds, you, you can't convert miles to seconds. It's, it's apples to oranges, not apples to apples. You can't convert kilograms to pounds. However, since we are usually on earth, we can assume that we have the same gravity in both instances, so we will allow the conversion between um, pounds mass and kilograms because of that. Let me say that again in a simple sentence. Because we're usually on Earth is the reason why you can convert between pounds and kilograms. One pound is equal to about 0.45 kilograms. Some other conversions for you as well. just giving you some more conversions because we are saying you can convert between um, pounds and newtons and pounds and kilograms. So how are pounds of mass and pounds of force related? Well, on Earth, we have our gravity is 32.174. or I just rounded it up to 32.2 before. Um, so in this case, one pound of mass is the same as one pound of force. That's what I was saying before, where like we're gonna say that you can convert uh, right away. In outer space where there's no gravity, well, one pound mass has no weight. There's no weight at all on or in outer space. On the moon, the gravity is a lot less than on Earth, really because the moon has less weight, it's less gravitational pull, but you can go into that in physics. So on the moon, the gravity is like one-sixth that of on Earth. So one pound mass would have 0.166 pounds of force. So if you step on a scale on the moon, the scale will give you about one-sixth of what your weight on Earth is. So if you weigh um, 120 pounds on Earth, you would weigh about 20 pounds on the moon. Conversely, if you can lift, I don't know, 100 pounds on a bench press here, you can do six times as much there. Okay, 
Now let's go back onto a volume. And I think we did volume pretty recently, so hopefully this won't take too long. But volume is the amount of three-dimensional space enclosed by an object. It's length times width times height for some shapes, but it's always going to be uh, cubic, right? Three. Three dimensionals. So we have two methods to determine volume. The first is we can calculate it using a formula if we know the geometry of an object. So in this case, you take your measurements, you do the right formula, you get the volume. The second one is you can measure it indirectly using water displacement. What does that mean? Well, let's go into an example for both of them. So if I said to you, hey, what's the, uh, what's the volume of this sphere right here? Or what's the volume of this cube right here? Well, you can get those by measuring it and then using a formula, right? So for a sphere, the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius. Once you know the radius, you can plug in this formula, get me the volume. For a rectangular prism, you can do uh, width times depth times height and get me the volume that way. Notice how both of these you have a unit of length multiplied by or multiplied by unit of length by unit of length. It's a three dimensional x, y, and z direction. So that's the straight up method of get calculating volume. Another way is like the indirect method. And you may have done this in science class. If not, I'm sure you will by the time you graduate. But let's say I wanted to get the volume of a rock, a random rock. Well, what's the volume of it? Well, I highly, highly doubt it's a perfect sphere or cylinder or geometric shape. You can easily calculate some dimensions and do a formula. It's a weird, it's a weird non-smooth shape. So there's another way to measure the volume of objects. So say we want to get the volume of this little dude right here, or that little uh, female figurine over here. You start by getting like a graduated cylinder from science class, and then you fill it up with water. And I'll measure the amount of water that I have. Usually it's like milliliters. And what this is saying over here is if you ever look closely at a cup of water, they have what's called the meniscus, which is just showing that um, water will actually kind of, if you look closely, will have a curve to it. Don't worry too much about that. That's more of your science class stuff. But another example of this would be like if you ever fill up a coffee mug to like the really, really, really tippy top, it'll actually kind of have like a dome to it. It has to do with um, uh bonding forces like the, the water bonds to the sides anyway let's go back to the example you take your graduated cylinder and you fill it with water and you measure how much water you have then you plop your object inside the cylinder and what's going to happen to the water level it's going to go up if you measure that distance or that difference i mean in the change in a volume that's the same amount of volume as this object right here so we'll, we'll do that again um, wrong way. You start by getting the volume of water in the cylinder. Drop your objects inside. The water level will go up. That difference, that change, is the amount of volume that those objects have. And I think that's a good stopping point for this video. I am limited to 15 minutes per video, so I'll have a second one um, that follows.